What's up, you guys? Damn right I got knives here with another DRIG Kate Live. Thank you guys for tuning in and enjoying these with me. This is a special one. Good person we all love very much. We got Guy on here. He's going to tell us about the Gigas and many other things. I've been posting all these onto YouTube, so hopefully you guys find them there as well as in my profile here on Instagram. I'm 10, 10 follows away from my giveaway, so come on, you know, 10 more people and I get to give away some shit. And um, yeah, all right. Let's get Guy on here. Let's get going. Let's get cracking with this. Let's go. Yo, what's up? How you doing? I'm doing good. It's not using my headphones. What's that about? I don't know. That sometimes happens. Maybe you need to connect it now that we are actually... Yeah, now that we're in there. Do you have the sound in your ears now? I don't, but... To be honest, if it's uh, working out for you, it's working out for me, so. Yeah, it's working for me. Sometimes, you know, I was going to talk all close and sexy into your ear hole. <laughs> Give me some of that. Give me some of that ASMR, huh? <laughs> That's right. Um, so what's with this song you had me start with? The, uh, what is it? Dagoth Wave. Dag wave. Well, shout out to everyone in the chat. What no, you're good. I got you. So quick shout out to everyone in the chat. I see everyone throwing up so much love already. Love you guys. Paul, thanks for having me on here. Hell yeah. Um, Dagoth Wave. So that, that artist, Young Scrolls, is like a parody artist. If you're any, if there's any gamers in the chat that knows Elder Scrolls, like the Elder Scrolls games, maybe you've heard of them. They're pretty popular. Yeah. He takes... He takes character voices from the Elder Scrolls and makes like hip hop tracks or like R&B tracks or just like different music tracks using the voices of characters from the game. So that was Dagoth Ur, a uh, character from Morrowind, a god in Dagoth Wave. I just love, I, I, I know the guy who makes the tracks. I think it's so cool what he does and it's just funky fresh. And so I always like to bump his stuff when I can. I was enjoying it, definitely. I listened to it earlier because I was like, okay, what's he sending me? Because what I do, yeah. just so people know, is I, I sometimes will ask whoever I'm interviewing if they have a song they want to start with. Um, and so guys said oh, yeah. this. I listened to it, I was like, all right, cool. I have no idea what the hell this is, but let's do it. <laughs> yeah, anybody in the chat who likes Elder Scrolls, go check out Young Scrolls and bump, bump his stuff. That's my man. Got Carbon Honey on here. We got a nice little crew of people on here listening right now. What's up, everybody? I got my Carbon Honey in here somewhere. So maybe he can answer this. That if uh, I feel like this smells a little sweet. So I've heard it's unscented, but then I don't know. It smells, like, that a, cool. it smells like a glazed donut. Maybe I'm wrong. That cool it's honey in it, maybe. Hmm. It smells like a glazed donut. I want to eat don't it. Either. I'm like don't don't put that on your donuts. <laughs> Who knows? It might be it might be safe to eat. Some of these oils are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I really appreciate you taking the time to do to do this. We've been talking about it a little bit, and it's an honor to have you on here. Um, you, right, my, you, have, you have a rich history that is appreciated far and wide. And uh, and I, I knew from the moment we first started talking that you were a really kind person, and I really I really appreciate that about your personality a lot because uh, that I think that's a good damn good thing. Thanks, man. Yeah, that, that's it a means a lot because I feel like uh, I'm definitely the type of person that like I believe in just like being yourself first and foremost. Like I feel like you'll get a lot further learning how to be yourself than emulating something else and so I always just try to be myself and so when I meet people that like vibe with me or tell me they think I'm a good person or a nice guy or whatever it's like that hits good because it's because I'm just being myself so I appreciate that I'm always saying that that the Bali song community is full of characters with that are themselves and stuff like that and we get and a lot of I think the when people talk about toxicity and stuff in the community I think a lot of that's just comes with youth and maybe insecurities of things 
you know, sometimes people are just being well, jerks out, right? But I also think a lot of that you can kill with kindness. And I think maybe you're similar to me where I, that's what my approach of that. Ooh, look at uh, the cat. Cat. cat there. We got cat. Tuesday the cat, the WB concept uh, mascot hanging out with us now. Very cool. Um, yeah, but so for, I think uh, a lot of the, a lot of the toxicity and stuff also I think is just like perceived toxicity because when people are like reading things online, they're reading it in whatever tone their head is like perceiving. So some people, like you said, might just be joking around about something, whatever, but someone just reads it in whatever tone or whatever way they want to and just them, now they hate that person or whatever, you know? Yeah, and then it creates a big uh, thing. Yeah, definitely. So where do you live? Where where do you, I, I kind of know this answer, but let's go ahead and talk about where you live. Sure. I'm from Salt Lake City, Utah, man. Uh, it's going to be the location of the next Blade Show, actually. Blade Show West, I should say next West, is going to be in Salt Lake City. So hometown uh, advantage for me, home court advantage. It's going to be a good time. Cool. So I'm sleeping at your house then. Hey. <laughs> We got. I was like, I don't, I don't know how much room we got, but hey, we could share a bed. You know, I'll share with you, Paul. <laughs> um, that's so cool, man. It's just right, right there. I mean, you know, they, they, you probably know the convention center where it's at, and just know you're gonna definitely. Have so, I actually have a history in like playing fighting games and card games competitively. So I'd used to like go to all the different conventions, travel for like those, those. And so anytime we'd have tournaments here in Utah, I'd be pretty much at the same convention we're having played at. So it's kind of cool now that my newest hobby and passion is bringing me back to places I've been in my previous passions and hobbies. So do you have an area that will be the new pit of Salt Lake City? That's a good question. I mean, the place is that it's at is honestly pretty big and outside of the outside of the actual hall where like all the stands and stuff are going to be is like a lot of space. So I think it's just going to be wherever people feel like they want to hang out. You know, I don't I don't have a good spot right off the top of my head outside of the convention center. There's like a cool fountain and stuff. So I imagine people will be chilling there. But. Um. Yeah, we got to find a spot for the after parties to be. To yeah, be I know. I know the new pit. Yeah, I, I, I don't off the top of my head. I don't know because there's not. I imagine there's like whatever the nearest by hotel where people are sleeping. That'll be where the parties happen, you know. Um, so is um, what was I going to ask? Oh, so Bali songs are fully legal there, right? Yeah, I, as far as I know, Utah is like tied with Texas for like the most lax blade and knife laws so we're gonna uh, you can no, no we're gonna get no heat for flipping. no problem you can buy carry open carry close the sell any any kind of any kind of knife you're good i was still selling at blade west when it was in long beach i was selling live blade volley a, lot, a, hey, sketchy, a lot of people were and i mean i i even got some sharpened gigas in there a couple times which was kind of funny because i was like they're really doing a good job checking these knives huh right um, so if you don't mind me asking, how old are you? Cause I always find this question very interesting. The range of people in the community. Yeah. So, uh, how old do you think I am? First off, I'm going to say, I'm going to say 27, 27. That's a good guess. Modern says, can't wait to give, give you 49 back at this blade West, my man. Shout outs. Um, I'm 30. I turned 31 in July. So July 15th is my birthday. I'm 30 years old, big three zero. Started flipping at 26. So yeah, four years. Nice. Okay, cool. Well, you're, you're damn good for four years in. I, I, there's not been a day that's gone by that I haven't at least passively got an hour plus in flipping in the last four years. So when you do, I mean, you already talked to Patrick about this on, on his, but uh, shout out to Ask Flo, my man Flan. Um, anytime you want to get good at something like this, you just got to practice. And so practice for practice. four years, 
for four years. I've put in a hell of a lot of practice and I'm glad that I'm glad it shows. Thank you. Yeah, people people seem to vibe with my style. I'm definitely not as technical as others, but I try and do my thing. No, you definitely have your own style. You do that. I don't know what you call it, but there's the little aerial the I don't know what you call that kind of aerial that your transfer that you do. Um, yeah, so you know it's what just I'm like talking about? Yeah, so they're just helix aerial transfers and reverse helix aerial transfers that I just loop into each other over and under my arms. So, but you have yeah. a nice catch to it that you do. You make yeah. it look. You make it look good. It's just got this got the smooth aesthetic to it. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, yeah, I love I love smooth aerials like that. Shout out Doc Bally. Shout out Knife Maestro. Ashu. Love all these people in here, man. Cool. Since you're reading along, we can kind of do this the Q and A a little bit. When you see a question, you want to answer it, answer it. We'll just throw oh, it in there. Yeah. Cause sometimes oh. they do it at the end and then it's like people come and go and they, you know, yeah. so if you see it's... something you want to answer and somebody wants to ask a question, go ahead and throw it in there. If guy sees it, he'll answer it. For sure. And if I don't see it, ask again at the end, we'll, we'll, we'll exactly. read, we'll check it back. But, yeah. Perfect. I like it. Um, so um, are there any other flippers close by you that you hang out with? Not that I like hang out with like on a, a regular basis and like the, it's the problem with having too many friends and knowing too many great people. Like I got my wife and kid, you know, he's starting kindergarten. I'm doing WB concept. Um, I'm doing part time. Like I, my homie owns a card shop and I like do part time as a tournament uh, operator, a TO running Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments and stuff. So like, <laughs> just as like something fun to get out of the house. So like I have, I have a lot of stuff going on that makes it hard for me to be able to like hang with everybody. And I've got like my tight knit three musketeers group of homies that I've had ever since like pre high school. And so it's like, anytime I can, I, I get with them, which takes away from hanging out with all my other Bally friends and stuff. But definitely like, if you know, I like quake Mike plan uh, on Insta. I don't think he's been to any of the blade shows, but if you don't know, I like Quake, go check him out. He's an absolutely inspirational flipper, OG, amazing guy. Eldon is close by. Uh, everybody knows Eldon. Yeah. Um, and then there's a lot of like the the Utah flippers, like E.T. Flips, Murnax, uh, Bally Song Nerd. I'm forgetting a million others, but and were those some, all some... the guys that were part of that little video you did? Yeah, for the, the Blade HQ did. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Did they film yeah. that up there? Yeah, so there's actually uh, some spots in downtown Salt Lake City that have some absolutely historical uh, graffiti pieces. And so there's a cool little back alley in between a few shops that gave us permission to go back there and film. So we were among some amazing uh, graffiti from some big names uh, in a cool spot, and they just let us do our thing. Nice. That was cool to see. I enjoyed seeing that. It's good to see it was, that their Blade HQ it, and and uh, Blade Show in general. I mean, I think they have to real. They go, oh, we've got to get behind the Bali Song community because that's a lot of tickets that are, they're going to sell. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. No, it's it was great. It was kind of cool being like the the old dude at the meet, <laughs> but I'm the extra old dude. <laughs> 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 no, yeah, but I like you said, it's not long. I've only been at it for not even two years or something. And uh, you're I, killing I it, though. Look at the date; it's been less than two years, and uh, I love it, man. I have fun. It's such a yeah. very it's really great. And I mean, I, I'm sure you saw the video, but in there, one of the things I said was like, it, one thing that's really cool about the Ballet Sound community is like, young and old, it kind of brings people with similar life kind of paths and vibes together, and it's just such a it's such a unique cool community man like i've met a lot of really cool people friendly people lifelong friends young and old just from flipping knives so yeah yeah there's so much crossover to other hobbies and other other things in life you know if you look at music skateboarding kendama you know uh, video games you know whatever there's just so much crossover and within that all different types of people you know it's really cool. I, I really love that about it. You know, Same. people you yeah. would never yeah. be friends with in a normal way, just by circumstance. And yeah. because this little knife that we hold in our hands, we, we get close and, and have cool times and conversations. 
Absolutely. Um, what was your first knife? So it's funny. Um, I'll just tell you, it's kind of a funny story. I'll give you the, the little story. I want the story. All right. My, my homie, we were at a homie's uh, birthday. It's like 26th birthday. And uh, another homie had just bought like 10 demons from Atropos because he wanted to like flip them in the United States or something. And I knew nothing about ballet songs at the time. And so he, he brought in this box of like first run Atropos demons, absolute garbage. Atropos has come a long way for the record. He makes some great stuff now. Uh, even ballet songs that flip well, his thinner ones. But this thing was hot trash, welded together channels, crazy bad. Uh, but I picked one up, and the first thing it did was deliver a cut. Um, scar is kind of gone, but delivered a cut. First thing I did, directly to my bone. Bled everywhere, stitches. It was horrible. Just wrecked my finger. And so... I made the joke that like somebody there made the joke that like, man, you must not have studied the blade. And I was like, man, so I guess I got to study the blade. And so I told him, let me buy one of those things. Cause I got to learn how to use it so that I don't cut myself next time someone hands me one. Ended up buying one from him for like 80 bucks. And, uh, I just looked online, like how to open Valley song, no cut. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I think it was like some big flips videos or something came up showing the gentleman's opening and like all of that stuff. And I was just like, yo, I'm in. And I already have a history in um, yo-yo. So yeah. I, I've, I've thrown for a long time since middle school I've thrown. So um, it really kind of hit that similar flow art vibe. Right. I was like, yo, this is kind of like yo-yo, but with knives. And so just took to it like, like duck to water, man. I, I just haven't stopped since then. Uh, shortly after that, bought a replicant from Blade HQ locally and haven't looked back. I'm about to get my first real yo-yo as well. My friend owns a yo-yo shop in, of all places, um, in, um, in Austria. Dude, yeah. that's awesome. I'm not getting it yeah. from him, but. I asked him, I said, you know, guy, I want to get a yo-yo. I want to have some fun with the yo-yo. So he sent me to a place to check out some, and I think I'm going to order one. So. Yeah, dude. So the, my buddy that got me into yo-yos back in middle school, he's like a friend of my older brother. And uh, he transitioned from, like, competitive yo-yo to judging local yo-yo competitions to running the local yo-yo competitions to now he owns his own – line of yo-yos that he manufactures and sells and that's actually one of the ones i got there it's called the parlay so shout outs to aaron i doubt he'll ever see this he doesn't know anything about ballet songs but yeah so it's, it's cool it's cool what's his company well, yeah, so his company is um one drop i think that's the one that my friend suggested dude yeah, yeah. They're, they're good yeah. they're good that's so funny yeah yeah, I think he sells that in Austria. Yeah, he, yeah. He's, get, he's got, like I said, he's definitely got some of his designs out there and stuff. It's really cool. Yeah. Um, so what's your favorite tricks to do with Bali song or, or anything? What, do you, what are you doing right now that, that you're working on? It doesn't have to even be a Bali song. What, 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 gets, you, what gets your goat? It's funny. It's funny you say that. I went to, I used to be in tumbling, like I used to be a gymnast. And so I recently took my kid, my kid's five to uh, like a, one of those ninja gyms where you like, they have like the ninja warrior courses and all the trampolines everywhere. And man, I can still, my 220 pound fat ass can still do a 360 backflip on a trampoline, baby. Right. So I still got tricks. <laughs> can you do it while um, like doing like a chaplain though? <laughs> so I, I thought about taking just a squiddy in there and doing a couple cool little videos, jumping around or something. But uh, uh, so ballet song wise, though, I really like I like some obscure things. I like infin infinity ladders, but not what no people normally call infinity ladders. People are when they when, when you hear people say infinity ladder, you're usually talking about they're just rolling 
they're doing like a, a infinity rollover really right they're keeping it over one finger i like doing the infinity ladder where you pass it between every finger continuously it's not something yeah. i see a ton of people do all the time um i like fucking hard <laughs> yeah it's, it's hard you gotta you gotta have those magic fingers man you know um i really like doing um scissor giraffe type stuff ever since i kind of I took two years to even like comprehend how to do those. And so now that like they, they kind of click for me, I'm just like addicted to them. Um, any sort of like transfer aerial, uh, like I'm sure you have maybe see me and people have seen me do like the, I do like some fans across my, the back of my hands and stuff. Yeah. Uh, definitely shout outs to, if you know, Andre, Andre spicy mayo, uh, yummy oyster boy, uh, he's sit style and Seiji, GG, Seiji B, uh, has influenced two huge homies of mine has influenced my flipping a lot with the transfers and stuff. So nice. Um, is there a trick you're working on that you don't do that you want to do? Oh, uh, I'll be honest. I'm kind of in like drill mode for the last few months. Like I, I got, a pretty, I got a repertoire and I feel like enough moves aren't a hundred percent that I'm just kind of like boringly drilling away at the same stuff so that it becomes a hundred percent. But I do want to get more into behind the back stuff. Um, since COVID started to now I'm down like 60, 50 pounds. So I can like kind of get behind my back now. So I'm like, Ooh, maybe I could start doing some behind the back stuff. <laughs> I've been working on the gunslinger one and it's yeah, you know, yeah. a bigger guy. It's, it's hard to get your hand it's, back there. It's hard, man. You know, when you got all this, man, yeah. it's hard. So it's true. I'm with you on that. I know what you mean. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd love to learn more like the behind the back stuff. I used to be, I used to be clean with the Van Goghs. Um, I used to be able to hit triple Van Goghs pretty much every time. Uh, I can still hit single rotations and Van Gogh's pretty easily, but like two plus, I'm like super inconsistent. I just didn't do them for like a year plus, and I feel like with power aerials, you really gotta, you really gotta keep at them. So there's there's everything I guess I would say I would work on. Thank you, Swashy. Yeah, once once the aerials get past one rotation, I'm like, nah. Yeah, I I I, I aerials are really fun for me and something I've gotten good at. Um, but yeah, I keep them simple still. Most of my tricks I still keep simple, but working on them constantly. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of simple tricks that look clean than complex tricks that look dirty. Patrick was talking about the same thing, you know, he's yep. like, got, you know, there's just something about having a clean style is really nice. Like if you look at Corbin, his, his style is so simple and so clean, but it's yep. not simple. It just, he makes it look simple, you know? He makes it. He makes it look simple because he's like, like I said, with drilling, he's drilled those things until they're perfect. You know, he could do them in his sleep. You know, he could close his eyes. Literally, you've seen him blindfold and do them. So, yeah, like that's just the power of, of drilling. Yeah. Once you once you have it to that point, you can focus on how it looks and flows. Um, so how did it come about? Um, working, uh, doing, being the MC. What, what was the development of that the MC for the Bali song? Because now you're doing it for East as well. This, this time, right? Yeah, man, it's pretty. It's, it's amazing. It's my favorite thing in the world. Dude, it's um, like you do a great job. There couldn't be a better person to do it. There really couldn't be. Thank you, man. Yeah. So, like I said, I come from like a fighting game and card game competitive background. So I'm like very familiar with like bracketed tournaments and that structure and like how those run. So I just like carried that over to Bally songs and just, yeah. So the way it came about, I'm really close friends with Tyvin of Squid Industries and Lucas, obviously Tyvin was like the first person I met in that group. And now everyone there is family. Um, huge shout outs to literally every person at Squid Industries. Uh, you already know your, your day ones to me. Uh, but yeah, TV, um, we met back in some flipping competition on Facebook my first year of flipping and I was in like the beginners category and we just started talking, hit it off. The years pass. I'm close friends with him and Lucas and they just start needing help because they're growing so fast. Yeah. Uh, and so I started going and working the booths with them. He'd fly me out there and, and pay me, you know, like an employee as if I was a squid employee 
to work the booths. You know, it was really great. And uh, I was happy to do it and help out. It kind of was like being employed by Squid, which was like a dream, you know, like a little part-time gig. And then they evolved more and got 40 employees and needed someone to really be in sync with the the competition side of things. And I guess I was just their, their choice. Nice. Great. So, yeah, Lucas TV, and- TV is great, man. He's the one who got me to start, you know, that – accepted my email and got started selling at shop so what really got us lined up to be a, a squid authorized dealer at shop so what uh, and lucas too but tv really responded to the email the very first time and and he's my point guy there at um at at squid to deal anytime i'm doing an order or any of that, i'm always talking with tv to to get it settled and uh, he's such a great dude to deal with and work with. I consider TV to be a brother, a best friend. He's he's like a he's one of those he's one of those people you you get in your circle and you don't let let out of your circle. He's he's just an amazing guy. Yeah, Lucas and TV, both two people I can call That's on the phone awesome. and talk to about my order for the shop, which is really cool that they respond in that way. I don't like to bug Lucas as much because he's so busy. So <laughs> I try to minimize like the amount of like, hey, Lucas, can you do this? Can you do that for me? What's up with this or what's up with that? But TV is kind of my guy for that. I, I probably annoy more, I guess you would say. <laughs> In yeah, a good- I mean, for me too, like, I feel like it's, you know, like you said, Lucas is a busy man. So when I, when I need something from them, which is often, I, uh, I hit up TV and, he makes it happen so um what inspired so did you like early on you've mentioned a few people is there anybody else that you can think of like early on that like maybe youtube channels or or instagram or who were some early inspirations for you when you were really digging in during those beginning times sure so um for me i really didn't use youtube as much after i joined facebook after I started learning just a couple basics from like the Big Flips YouTube channel, so yeah, shout out to Big Flips. Um, I, I joined the Facebook group and got pretty big into to posting and being in there. And so a lot of like my early inspirations that I would watch videos and like copy uh, from was like Phoenix Fire, if you know Stu, um, Billion Boyd, Sir Billion. Um, he, he hasn't posted in a long time, but his name was Brian Sherman, B. Sherm, uh, had an amazing flow. Uh, Sean Jarma. Like, these are a bunch of guys who I haven't seen posted. But, um, you know, obviously, Stu and Bill still around coming to shows and stuff. But, yeah, a lot of the early people, um, a, a big one, too, is Flip Zone, if you know Rob LaStage. Yeah. Um, I actually just, and this this Gigas is for him. Oh, so nice. this this is going to Flip Zone, so which is kind of cool because – he was a really big early inspiration. When when I first got into flipping, I would show people Rob's videos and say, this is the best flipper in the world. So, yeah. Very cool. Um, since then, though, that was kind of just the start of it. I would say my, my style doesn't really reflect a lot of those early inspirations, but definitely reflects more of my current inspirations, uh, such as like Andre, Seiji, TV, uh, Lucas, like these are all guys who've taught me tricks and for Joff, uh, Joff, shout out Joff, really close brother of mine, homie of mine. Love you, Joff. Uh, these are guys who, who I hang out with and teach me tricks. And so it's like, it's, it's definitely, I've developed more of that influence. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, let's see. Um, so how did you go about at this point you developed? You, you got to this point where you are, and then you said, you know what, I want to make a knife of my own. How did that all come about? I've just always been a creative person, um, not successfully, right? <laughs> but creativity is creativity, right? Um, uh, so I definitely loved the idea, even before Bally Songs, of learning to uh, make knives or forge blacksmith bladesmith 
uh, do like 3D design. I thought just like any of that stuff it was all really cool to me. And so it actually started with me being a blacksmithing apprentice for a year locally. Oh, okay. And I, I learned under a local master blacksmith how to make Damascus. Um, and so I did that and it was fantastic. And one of some of the best experience of my life, I really miss hammering on steel. I just don't have a good spot for it at my house. I need to, I need to get something set up, but long story short, I made my first Bally song blade out of Damascus that I forged. It was a piece of shit, terrible blade looked amazing. And I kind of got like the hook, like I could make my own knife. Huh? And so from there I started drawing designs. And uh, I've posted on my Instagram, if you scroll down, I have the first paper drawing of the Gigas. And uh, it was definitely an amalgamation of just like inspiration from fantasy design, video game design, Legend of Zelda, Final Fantasy type stuff. Um, and so, but, but I also at that point knew that if I wanted to make it flip as how I wanted it, how I thought would be the best flipper. I need to learn some design, 3D design, because in CAD, you can tweak weights. You can see all that stuff. And so my mom actually had the great idea. You don't need to actually be enrolled in school, but you can take college classes. They're called workforce classes. They're not for any credits, but they're just to kind of bolster your, your workforce abilities. And so my local community college had uh, CAD classes for SolidWorks. <clears throat> and so I took the first class and the second class over the course of a year learning SolidWorks at a college uh, while working my main full-time job that I worked for the 10 years before I quit and uh, kind of just had a lot of mentorship from Lucas. And actually, if you know Doug Chamberlain, uh, the guy who makes the squiggles, scales, squiggles, scales, squiggles, oh, yeah. uh, they both helped me a lot with a little early um, CAD stuff too. So uh, translated the Gigas uh, from the paper design into into CAD and started searching locally for uh, machine shops. And uh, every quote I got was a billion dollars, roughly. And uh, it just didn't seem realistic. And so I was talking to Lucas and TV and Lucas introduced me to Julian of JK Design. And we hit it off immediately. Huge shout outs to Julian, Joe Hansen. A couple of my couple of my biggest homies, brothers in the world. Julian is an absolute soul homie. Uh, like I said, we just hit it off and talked it over, and he really vibed with the Gigas design, and the rest is history. Nice, yeah. Julian and Joe, b both great people for sure. Uh, Julian was kind of the first person I ever did a, a live interview with for one yeah. of my reviews and then that kind of inspired me to be like oh what if i actually turned them into interviews and made it easier to interview people and wasn't um where i was sending them questions trying to get them to answer but actually forced people to go live with me for an hour so the inspiration is there and i've been and uh julian is definitely one of the interviews coming up pretty soon but i'll announce that at some point but i've been holding off on that yeah. one for a while because uh um because he he was the one that kind of the brain child or came the idea came to me to do oh what if it was pure interview with makers and flippers um but he's, also he's a, if he's a top knows, gent so sorry go ahead i said he's a top gent so definitely this pat in atlanta this past blade show was the first time i got to meet him and joe so many people i got to meet for the first time but it was a real pleasure to finally meet them in person um, and also, if anybody out there knows how to get in touch with um, Big Flips, that I think would be a fun interview for people. That yeah, would be cool one. <laughs> what I think unknowingly has influenced more flippers than he and then he knows. Shout out to Chicken Man <laughs> Flips. Chicken Man Flips in the chat. Love you, Chicken Man. Chicken Man is the man. The new generation of like awesome flipping right there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would like to get in touch with Big Flips. I, I I don't think he's on Instagram, or I don't know. Maybe it's not under Big Flip. It's so yeah. anybody out there watching knows how to get in touch with him, and I can invite him to do one of these lives. Would be pretty interesting. Um, so let's see. Um, let's talk about the Gigas. Let's get into this because I want to talk about this knife a little bit and look at it a little bit closer and talk about some of your choices 
and what's going on with this design because I've really fallen in love with it. I knew, I messaged you early on before we knew each other. I just was like, saw this knife and I was like, oh, I got to get one message you and you're like yeah good luck brother hopefully you can get one of the drops i'm like fuck okay so it's gonna be like that <laughs> yeah any uh anybody who knows me knows that it's frustrating to deal with me and that's no, just no. i didn't it's, mean and, and no what i what i mean by that is what i mean by frustrating is like i'm just this one man operation i'm growing every month you know as time goes by i'm trying to expand to not being a one man operation um, but because of that, I tend to lotto off knives to people that aren't close to me. And then if you're close to me, you tend to be able to get a gigas and people, people see that as unfair, but for me, you know, maybe it is unfair, but a lot of the time, the people that I'm selling gigas to privately either directly influenced me are very close to me or directly helped me get through or to a point where I'm doing what I'm doing. Sure. So uh, no, you were yeah. really kind to me. You were very nice, but I was in my, what I meant by that was that I was like, okay, I'm going to have to get a, a lot of people up. You have to get a drop. That's just, yep. you have to get, yeah, it's part of the deal of hunting a knife. So I was like, okay, I'm going to have to like hold off and get one of these at the right time. Yep. Um, yep. Because I was in love with it. I love. And I remember, I think you did try and get in on a couple of lottos, but no luck on the first yeah. day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then we got to know each other better and you were kind enough to yeah. like, once we met in person, it became passed. friends after yeah. once you, once you meet me in person, things definitely go from, from that online relationship to the next kind of level. So, yeah. All right. I love the Tanto or sorry, the Kukri style blade a lot. Um, Thank you. It's not your average Kukri at all. It's totally different and unique. You just don't see that. It, it's kind of like, um, so we were explaining it earlier. It's like uh, it's like medieval. It has a medieval feel. Yeah. So <laughs> I love that you say that. Uh, the Gigas is directly inspired by high fantasy and video games. So yeah. that that I love to hear it. And honestly, the the Kukri um, in the original drawing of the Gigas, the Kukri almost does look more traditional Kukri, uh, but with the design fitting in between the handles i i kind of went with you know this straight this like straight back with a very gradual uptake to the swell and that kind of gave it just this very unique unmistakably a kukri but i, I mean it, yeah i'm very proud of the blade design it's um, definitely unique and the the swedge um the tang there's several parts of this that like members of the Bally song community directly gave input on and I changed and kind of came up with. So the Gigas really is, you know, it's, it's my design, but it's an amalgamation of the passion of the community. And it's just so, it's so cool to, to see that because it's a Bally song, the blade came out this way. You know what I'm saying? Just say, I really appreciate you didn't make this too sharp either. <laughs> yeah. So, I actually offer, I offer to sharpen the swedge and the only person who's done it and he's done it twice is Joff. Really? So yeah, he, he flips him 1.5 edge, but uh, I personally love the idea of sharpened swedges, the, the half edge on the back, but no default. This is very dull meant, you know, this is meant for flipping first and foremost performance. Um, you know, I, I didn't want to have, and I'm not calling anyone out specifically, I'm not saying there's a lot, but there's definitely high end knives you'll get for over a thousand dollars and they're beautiful art pieces, but the construction or the flippability or functionality is not really there. And I wanted to make sure I didn't fall into that trap of having like a beautiful design and a great knife that would still sell, but then end up not performing because like I'm a flipper. So yeah, it, it, it had to be both. Yeah, it definitely performs well, for sure. This has become now a knife that I, you know, there's that those 10 knives that I kind of turn to or so to flip often, you know, I have enough, I mean, I have a lot behind me here, so I have a lot to choose from. And this has become one that I'm picking up almost every day now, you know, amongst uh, a couple handfuls of others that I flip a lot. So, oh, this, you know, I really am enjoying it. So with the holes, was that just for weight distribution or was that aesthetics? Aesthetic, so because it looks really um, cool. Part of so the the name Gigas itself comes from 
Final Fantasy. But I'm also a huge fan of Pokemon. Um, I'm an avid collector. And uh, there's a Pokemon called Regigigas who has a lot of holes all over him, a very holy aesthetic. And so I was like, I already got the name Gigas. Let's get some of those Regigigas holes on there. Kind of helped the the handle design with the smaller holes and the blade with the small holes. And I just love the aesthetic of it. Did it um, not have holes at some point, and then you added the holes? No, it it started, yeah. No, it started with the holes. I, I, you know, yeah. And then the you have the triangle-ish kind of ends. Yeah, What's that it? is the that is the WBC trademark. Obviously, oh, not trade. Not trademark. That's a W. That t- so that too, but um, it's like before a- before I did manufactured valleys i was making really crappy scales and rehandles and all the scales and rehandles that i'd make for people just as my personal touch i did these ends okay. i always did i did pointed ends you can look back at some of the crappy pink rehandles and stuff i did out of g10 i'd always point the handles because you know i i, I figured handles often look the same on the end and the only performance point that you're worried about with the handle ends is maybe if you're doing pirouette type tricks. Yeah. That's the only real contact you'd make. And so I, I just. Or a palm fan. Yeah. Yeah. And so I just made sure to heavily chamfer it and make it comfortable. And in a way I have people who are very good at pirouette type tricks telling me that the point actually almost works like a top and it makes those tricks easier. So not only is it a cool look, Kind of my my trademark thing I did uh, before I even got into Bally's. Um, it's it's like functional in a way. It looks really cool. I think just about any any design I make will have handles like that. There's no hot spots either. There's no sharp edges. It's uh, done. made it. It's, yeah, we made sure the the yeah. radius on everything was very comfortable. Yeah, and then was this design pattern? Was there weight? Was this kind of cutting down on certain using the opportunity and then making a cool design, cutting down on some weight and whatnot. Absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, for me, design and weight distribution comes hand in hand with a belly song. You can't really do one with the, without the other. You can't say, I'm going to make a belly in this, like in this weight range and then also apply whatever design you want and make it happen, right? Like if you want it to be in that weight range, you have to design it in a way that, attributes that so i i wanted the gigas to be mid four range yeah and so i knew that it would have to have right 4.5 4.6 on the v2s yeah okay and so i wanted it to be mid four range that's my perfect range you know i like four to 4.5 4.5 to five kind of just the four range is my sweet spot so i went kind of in the middle of that and um the size of the holes and the slot were changed to accommodate but the design was there from the beginning with the intent of reaching that weight and the real medieval touch is those yeah yeah so shout outs to stitch steel you guys know ryan harbor stitch steel makes amazing knives the tang was almost directly uh some input from him i had a similar tang and it just wasn't it wasn't quite there and he suggested some changes drew this up on his workbench and was like man that'll that'll do great so it it kind of came together great almost gives it like that darth vader helmet look um gives it the master sword hilt look yeah you know what i'm saying definitely um what else can we say about this the weights do you ever switch out the spacers or anything like that do you have different options so i personally don't and I'm like unreasonably, okay, so I'm like pretty unreasonable when it comes to like <laughs> wanting to switch switch these out because so, and let me explain to you why. I, I try not to get bugged when there's like a bunch of people telling me like, oh, I'll make sure, you know, I can get barrels from Kuski, et cetera. And I'm like, you can do that. That's your thing. I had an intention behind the weight distribution and design on my knife. And the reason I'm such a stickler for it 
is because this might not be something you know about the Gigas or maybe you've seen in other knives, but I specifically designed the swell in the blade, the swell in the Kukri to match the weight of each spacer. So when the spacers are in, the spacers I designed it with, and the Bally Song's in motion, you have even weight on all three ends of the moving yeah. Bally Song. And so while, while like this, you may not get a perfect balance point for what people will consider neutral, your, your Bally Song is never like this when you're flipping it. Your Bally Song is in motion. Right. Your belly is always moving. With that movement, the the center of mass becomes here. And so, with my design, with these spacers, while flipping, it truly becomes neutral, because the weight is distributed, designed to be the same. So, the second you take out these spacers and you put in something lighter, that's your preference. People do it. A lot of people have put barrels in there. They like that, but that design element no longer exists. I'm leaving mine as it is. <laughs> hey, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I love it. I love it. I, I like a little weight at the end of the handles for me, it, even though I'm, we like- I'm a very momentum-based flipper, you yeah. know? I like, I like the knife to do its thing, and I just put my fingers in the right place at the right time. That's what she said. That's why the wife likes me. <laughs> uh, all right. Cool, man. Yeah, I love this knife. Um, one thing I thought of, maybe it'd be interesting to see some jimping for certain things at the ends of the handles here, but I've gotten used to it now. That's just, if I had to think of something, you know what I mean? And I don't mean that in a critique kind of way. No, no, trust me. I, that's my one critique on my own design. Not one, I have many. Uh, an, an artist hates their work more than anything else. Um, but the the one main thing that I, I think if I did it again is I'd put a lot of that jimping on there, but with kind of how the V2 has adapted and, and become, I almost think it doesn't need it. The finish work that, that we're achieving with Julian gives such a good grip. I yeah, flipped this thing, like, you think in, That's the thing in winter, uh, you know, Atlanta, hot, sticky, I feel great about how the finishes feel. And a lot of the time when I feel like I want jimping, it's because I don't have that grip. It's a slippier aluminum knife. And I didn't want to just add the jimping because it's something people are doing as a standard now or because it could be there. I wanted to add it because it needed it. And in my eyes, I don't truly, I convinced myself that it doesn't need it. Right. Um, I love but how thin I, I, the handles are too. They're nice and thin. You don't realize that maybe when you're first, until you get it in your hand. There's a lot that happens with this knife when you actually get to hold it. When Before when you're looking at it, but I mean, it's like that with other knives too, but I find absolutely. it a lot more with this knife. When I actually finally got one and actually got to flip it for a while and get used to it, I really started appreciating more and more different elements to it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then so what? Um, so you went with uh, Tang pins instead of Zen pins. Was there yes. any thought you prefer that, or what? What was the reasoning there? Not a preference thing. I I like Zen pins fine. I like pinless a lot. Um, I think whatever pin setup you're rocking is is fine. Um, the intent behind it was, um, I wanted to limit the amount of failure points and um you know i feel like you're spending over a thousand dollars on a knife you want to get that thing you want that shit to be solid forever mm -hmm. and i just felt like in my history in my experience with hidden zen pins zen pins they're amazing but with enough time and wear even just the tiniest bit, you'll get a rattle or you'll get, um, you know, it, it, it's, and it's, that's so subjective, but just kind of, I thought if I'm going for that, you get the knife and it's good feel. I press fit a couple of high carbon steel tang pins in there. That's just done. Like, right. you know what I mean? Like that blade is, that blade is done. No extra hardware. So 
That was the intent behind it. I like Zen pins a lot. I do believe my next design that I'm releasing will be on Zen pins. Don't quote me because that might not happen. But I do have some Zen pin designs I'm playing with. I like them. So. Well, I feel like with this knife, too, it's a classic look. Tang pins are a classic thing. They're... I, I felt the Tang pin aesthetic fit the, gig, the Gigas more. Yeah. I put some different hardware on mine in case anybody's wondering. I, I saw I saw when you, you – I, I don't remember it was in a live or something, but those look sweet. Yeah, they're cool. This guy gave them to me. Oh, shoot, I should know his name. Um, he sent them to me for free to try out, and I have to yeah. review and get back to him about them. So I've had them on here to kind of test them out. But you can adjust their sizing and stuff like that and kind of also helps you kind of mess with some of the tuning. And it, they, it also helps them stay in there pretty good. So it's kind of cool enjoying it. Yeah. I did add a little blue Loctite as well because one of them was backing out. I'm a, but, I mean, like – these knives, I'm a you're, flipping, tie guy. you're flipping a freaking knife. So it's like, think, yeah. if you don't know some amount of maintenance to a knife, and then people- It's going to be hard for you. Left and right. It's like, I don't know, it's, it's like driving an old car. You know, if you don't know something about mechanics, you know, you're going to be taking your car into the shop and paying somebody else all the time. So it's, it's in your own interest to kind of understand and this is a lot more simpler than an in engine. It's like, for Christ's Absolutely. sake, right. learn a bit about your knife maintenance and, and get into it. It's fun. I yeah. think working on knives is fun. If I don't have to take them apart, I don't. Because if they're if there's nothing failing, I don't like to mess with what, what's going on. But yeah. For sure. And, and that's the way I am, too. And it's, it's funny um, because... 98% of the, the knives I've sold, the first thing the person does when they get it is they open it up. And it's like, what? What F what effort? Why? Why did I put off the effort? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't take my... I use, to make I, it I, perfect. Sometimes if I'm um, taking off so a batch it's or, funny. A I, or I'm doing something to modify the knife, I will take it apart pretty quick. For sure. Generally nowadays, like I don't take apart my knives until there is a reason, you know? Yeah, and it's and I understand, especially with sandwich designs, which the geek is a sandwich. People love playing with that. People love playing with putting different spacers in there, weights, this and that, different finishes, anodizing, because you can take it apart in its entirety. Um, I I definitely haven't catered to making the gigas one of those really easy, fun, take apartable, mess up withable knives, and that's almost intentional because I. I really do have that, man, I want to call it artistic entitlement or something, but like, it's, it's like my baby. That's my child, that design. Yeah. And so it, it, I have like an intention. I have an intention behind it. And when that intention is changed, I feel like it loses its artistic this value. Is the, this is also an art piece. I mean, this is part of you. Absolutely. It's like, you know, it's very yes. personal, you know, Absolutely. it's like, writing a I see what art. writing a song or doing a piece of artwork you know and then if you give it to somebody you want them to take care of it you still have an attachment to it yeah and so but obviously when someone buys something it's their property you can do whatever the hell you want with it right but i can't i can as the artist maker whatever you want to call it manufacturer uh, designer whatever it it hits that that spot where it's like that intent is broken <laughs> So that's cool that going back a little bit that you actually studied and you did some blacksmithing and you got behind taking classes because there's different levels of knife making that go on where people are making them fully themselves, you know, to the stitch steel level where he's doing it all handmade yeah, and all. stuff to people that are using CNC machines and doing that themselves to, to people like uh, Jimpy, who's uh, sending stuff out kind of like with like with you to have yep. things made, you know, the, um, like uh, the Pluto or the PDN, yep. you know, this is in that realm where you've designed it and you've you understand knife making and you understand the process, but you had somebody else manufacture it, then you're assembling it and doing a lot of the finish work yourself, correct? Yes. Yep. And, and that's obviously not like by choice, that's out of necessity. Um, and a lot of the times I need to have this conversation with people for them to understand it, especially the younger crowd, 
who put their whole bank account into a gigas or a knife, you know, uh, and then they'll trade it around or whatever. But this is a process for me, right? Um, as far as like my craft is concerned, it's still very early on. Um, so the growth needs to happen. Uh, and my intention absolutely is there to become maybe like another Julian type or mini squid industries type or titanium type where I've got my own machines in house. And if I got a design, I put it up in CAD and I go out and we machine it. That's the intention. That's the end goal. But there's, there's a path, there's a, there's a path, there's a mountain I have to climb to get there. And the community is a huge part of that. And with every single purchase they make, they're directly contributing to the movement, the upward movement of that momentum. And uh, while the product or the process, et cetera, might not be what it could be when I am at that point, when I get to that point, it's as good as it can be from what I have been able to put my heart and soul into for now. You know, Julian is a master machinist. Um, and I'm, I'm blessed to be able to, to have a mentor like Lucas and Julian and these people in the community who are masters. Yeah. And uh, I'm definitely am lucky to have the circle that I have. And uh, yeah, for anybody that's curious why Adigas is like $1,200, why they're so expensive, so much of that is me paying to have all of the stuff done and sent to me so that I can finish them up. A lot of things are done that way. That's nothing. Yeah, but you know, there's nothing the last, wrong with it. Some people get no. very the opinionated about. There's just different ways to do things, and it doesn't. For sure, and the last, uh, yeah, the last thing about that that I really want to say is like, that's a temporary thing, and people that are longtime supporters of me, or that will be longtime supporters of me, will see that that's a temporary thing. You know that I'm able to sell a design like a Gigas for twelve hundred bucks. When we get to a point where I'm able to do these things in house, which I have to, I have to sell them for this amount to make ends meet and grow to that point. My prices will come down, and and when things are done in house, the cost that I save from being able to do it in house will go directly back into the cost of the knife. I'm not a you know. People, not just me, but people seem to think people like me or anyone outsourcing to get stuff done are just these villains, dude. We're just money-hungry, greedy villains. And it's like, I promise, if you saw how much it costs me to make one gigas, yeah. you would be out. You would be out. <laughs> so Yeah, my guess is your cut is not, like, insane on this. But no, we don't need to get no. into exact numbers because... No, I'm, for sure. It's, but... it's, it's, it's obviously I'm charging enough to make it possible. And every single purchase from the community and every piece of support, every follow, every like directly contributes to a future where I'm able to do things in house and provide the, such high quality products at a cheaper price, like the tsunami, which is the best ballet song in existence. So. And like you said, you have a wife and a kid, you have a life that you need to pay bills. So you should be making some money. Absolutely. But you did mention, and I want to talk about that because it was next on my question. So I, we passed it over and I'm coming back to it now. Yeah. Your next knife, you mentioned it. Let's talk a little about your next knife. What's going on there? Can so you give us I, any hints or tell us you can... I ain't gonna say, I ain't gonna say much today. I didn't really prep for that. Okay. Um, but, but I will say... There coming. There are things coming. I, I will say there is more than one... I, I like ...new it. design um, that I... Uh, there's, there's more than one. Um, I don't know if it'll be the next design, but within my next designs, the plural, uh, we will be hoping to have a cheaper aluminum WB concept option. Um, and for the other one, all I'm going to say is for anyone that's been following me, if you know anything about the Yagudo, that's all I got to say. Okay. All right. Um, so this, I have number 39 here. Yeah. 39. I yes. see. Yes, sir. How many of the V ones did you do? So V ones are 001 through 025. Okay. And then the V2. And anything, anything above uh, 025 is a V2. And what was the differences? Man, do I have a V1? I do. Hold the phone. Oh, well, I, I told you to hold the phone, and then I dropped the phone. What's up, guys? 
I will show you in person here the differences. How about that? That's about as good as it gets. What's up, Joff? How you doing? Wait, Joff is in here? Joff? just popped on. Joff! I love you, Joff! That's, that's my that's man, the hundred cards. How you doing, buddy? All right, here's the V1. The Gigas is awesome, Steampunk. Man. It's a really great knife. So, so in your in your hand you hold a V2. Yes. Here's a V1. Immediately you will notice. Oh, immediately you will notice. Guy is my best friend. Joff, you're my best friend. I love you, dude. Wow, I love that man. Um, you'll see there's a symmetrical hump to the choil here. Uh. Whereas on the V2 we have removed that symmetrical hump for chaplain comfort or trick comfort. The original intention behind this hump was symmetricality and from a completely artistic standpoint. I liked that the choil poked out and I liked that the hump poked out and gave you almost a symmetrical look, right? Other than this recurve. Um, so that was the intent behind it. It did end up, it's not uncomfortable, maybe slightly abrasive. So ended up flattening that out and this choil right here, if you, I can't really give you a good, yeah, that choil will absolutely fuck your day up if you're doing any bite handle manipulations like bite handle scissors, etc. It's a tooth. It points out, it's sharp, and it ruins your day. So we moved, as you can see on the V2, we moved that choil up significantly and angled it in a way that you have room for your fingers during bite handle manipulations. Other than that, we also did a little bit of underside milling, a tiny, tiny, tiny chamfer on the underside of the handles for comfort, uh, as well as just a little bit more comfort changes to the overall machining of the handles and the blade. All right, cool. Nice. Um, so got some other knives coming. Um, um, okay, this is gonna be a, my funny question, okay. Um, do you, so do you have like a, a sister or brother or something? I have two brothers and a sister. Okay. Um, we'll pick one of your brothers for this one. So if, would you, this is a would you rather question. So okay. would you rather, you know who Jennifer Lopez is, first of all? Yeah. Okay. Would you rather eat a cracker <laughs> with a little poop from Jennifer Lopez on it or cut off I picked that one cut off one of your oh, brother's sorry. fingers with the gigas uh, uh, you would uh, just I'm, lose a pinky I'm gonna eat JLo I'm gonna eat JLo doo doo dog I can't hurt my brother like that good good answer there good answer all right Some I thought people... long and hard about that question believe it or not it is actually on my <laughs> questionnaire here would you rather eat so, jennifer lopez <laughs> i love that i love that's such a paul that's such a paul question yeah man i might have to a good paul question and at least you know one an interview you know i might have to take one for the team <laughs> and eat some doo-doo <laughs> beaver lip says i would have just ate it regardless <laughs> <laughs> Uh, J-Lo poop and you know because I was going to go with somebody like would you eat Trump poop or something but you know, if you make it like from somebody beautiful like Jennifer Lowe, you like it. you're like it's a little <laughs> bit more digestible <laughs> digestible is the perfect <laughs> word you could use there dog all right so you told us my one of my questions on yours how did you get so close to the squid squad but now I understand the story and the history there um, yeah, so the, the only thing I left out, I will say, was the actual origin. We were in, like, the beginner intermediate of the Fliptober Fest, whatever was happening on the Facebook competition. Joff, have a great, have a great rest of your night. I love you. And uh, me and TV just started talking, and I asked him, squid trainers were impossible to get at this time. This is when they were the hottest things since sliced bread. And I couldn't get a squid. So I asked TV directly, yo, can I get a squid trainer? And he hooked me up. Back when they were the hardest thing to get, he gave me one red handle, one black handle, yeah. the sickest squid trainer you could get. 
And so that that squid trainer started everything. From there, we were just like, me and TV became best friends, started helping out with the squid stuff, me and all the squid crew. Yeah, that's fam. So that's fam for life. Squid squid squad for life. I, I, I was uh, officially sponsored for them for a little bit. I helped out the competition or the booth a little bit. I'm doing the competitions. So, yeah, it's, it, I'm repping squid till the day I die. Absolutely. I feel the same way, man. They're the ones, they're the first, for, like I said, they were, I went to them. I, I needed, I needed, I knew, you know, selling nine. Are you laughing about Jennifer Lopez? Cruz? <laughs> That's <laughs> quote me. Ryan, you got me. <laughs> All right. My man, Ryan. Um, yeah, they, they got behind our little shop, you know, we're selling records and turntables. I'm like, I want to sell knives too. And I started yeah. selling some pocket knives. And I was like, I really want to sell Bali songs. Um, and without Squid's help, man, you know, other things wouldn't have come in and, and as well. So I always like to acknowledge that, you know, they're, they're real people about the community, Lucas, TV. They're just, it's, man. There's a mentality. There's a mentality I subscribe to, and it is rare that you meet people that subscribe to this mentality. And TV and Lucas, Lucas especially, big shouts to Lucas, subscribe to this same mentality. Totally. It's that, what's the point of sitting in first class if my homies can't sit? They, there's, there's no point in success if you're alone. Lucas, Lucas will help, it's insane. He will help you succeed. And and he's helped me succeed. He's helped you succeed. He's helped so many people succeed. It's in his blood totally. to bring others to up shop. with came, him. It's a skill. Yeah, he came to the shop shop Soet and was like, "Look, what if you know? What if he put some bullies over here? He sent me some stands. You know, I had a great perspective on certain things of helping me for you know displaying them to like, you know. And then you know, same with with Cerrone. You know, he was you know we had a conversation about getting uh Cerrone uh to do use bushings he's like I'll make the bushings for Cerrone I messaged Cerrone I was like hey what if we did this collab where Cerrone where Lucas made the the bushings and the hardware you know that's helped out Cerrone I mean yeah Lucas and TV all of them have that mentality and I really like that and it it's kind of the person I am too. I'm always helping people out with different things. And, and I just, yeah. like that. I like that, the mentality behind that. Um, I mean, look at the way he sets up the booth for Blade Show where he rents out other there. spaces for people to just have a space to flip at. I mean, that's so yep. cool. I yeah. mean, that's just like giving money to. Just to have somewhere the community can be. Yeah, exactly. It's so great. Um, how do you feel about how Bali songs are evolving? As since we're kind of on that topic a little bit, like it's evolved a lot, it. especially during the pandemic. Any thoughts on that for you? Where do you see it heading? I love it. You know, um, I think like the explosion of trainers and the accessibility of trainers at a good price to like younger younger people has really been big for the community. And, you know, I used to be in the mindset that, like, if you ain't learning on a live blade, you're not learning for real. Uh, but then I actually started just training with trainers and realizing that they work and are not some fake version of a live blade. Like, to do tricks on a trainer, you still have to be able to do the tricks. Totally, yeah. And uh, so, you know, and having a kid and just being in public, you know, it's always a trainer for me. I'm not trying to create awkward situations, but I definitely, I could, I could pop anything on a live blade that I could do on a trainer. And so once I kind of saw that and realized that, I was like, this is really good for Bally songs. And so, like you said, that, that growth has been happening. And I love to see it. I, I, I've directly, since I've been emceeing the competitions, I've directly seen the crowd and entrant growth of flipping. I've seen the uh, growth of like the coverage of it from like a media standpoint of like people at the show or people in the knife realm or even just random people like Pootie Pie. Like I had my 11 year old nephew think I'm the coolest person in the world because I'm in a couple Pootie Pie videos, you know? So like, it's it's funny. It's, it's, it's funny how organically something like knife flipping has grown. But when you think about it, it's one of those things that's so cringe, it's badass and everyone can't help but love it. 
And I'm not surprised by the growth, and I welcome it, and I can't wait to see it become like a small little sport that it's become. Yeah. I always compare it to skateboarding as that same mentality where there's that danger element of doing tricks. Um, yeah, it, it's... I always... When people kind of look at me crazy or whatever, ask, you know, don't you get cut or whatever, and I'm like over a thousand times. Um, when I give them the comparison of spinning fire poi, they kind of get it. Like, yeah. you think those guys never get burned? Yeah. What? You know what I mean? So, you know, so they kind of like, you're right. Okay. Um, so some flippers and some makers you want to shout out? We kind of already did that. Any, is there a yeah. maker out there that you're like, I want one of his knives and you don't have one? What's your collection like? As far My as collection... I got a I got a collection, man. Um, shout outs to Modern Pyro of M3K Knives. Um, made the verdict recently. Uh, I got my verdict. Uh, they're kind of new up and coming. Uh, they've ran into a lot of kind of manufacturing struggles that I vibe with because I ran into all the same ones. Uh, but they're powering through it and have put out a really good flipping knife with a cool, unique design. What is it called? Uh, so again? I don't know about this. The Verdict from M3K Knives is M-I-I-I-K. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. I thought so, milk knives always. <laughs> yeah, people say that. Yeah. Uh, so big shout outs to, to Modern Pyro, Gabby. Um, and uh, speaking of which, Modern Pyro just joined. So, yeah, huge, huge shout outs to Gabby. Uh, the verdict's an amazing knife, um, but I have that. Uh, so definitely, definitely go support. Um, but if we're, if we're talking when I don't have, I mean, I'm sitting here. I got my Jimpy thumb chucks, right? One thing I don't have is a Sentinel, and I love the Sentinel. So I think w my next purchase is probably a Sentinel. Huge shout-out to Jimpy. Amazing guy. Makes great products. Beg Larry. I like flip, I like slinging Big Larry too, so that stuff, you know. Um, but I mean, I got my Monarchs. I mean, I got, I got, I got a little bit of everything, dude. So it's kind of hard for me to, to say something I don't got. So you know what? I'll pick Jimpy. I'll pick yeah. Jimpy. I don't have a Sentinel yet. I know it slaps every time I flip one. I need it, so that'll be Jimpy's, my pick. I really enjoyed my interview with him because he really comes at it from a design design standpoint. I really love the stress ball. The logo he has so simple. His logo. I mean, where's, I, I was gonna say, where's my phone? I'm I'm talking to you on my phone, but I have one of his his logo stickers on my phone, the Japanese one. I love his his aesthetic, man. Totally, yeah, and a really nice guy, really like down to earth. Like, down to earth. Nice guy. Um. So also, my will you be in Salt Lake? Of course, of course you are. Do you ever compete? <laughs> Do I have what? Do you ever compete these days now that you're emceeing so much? Are we going to ever see you compete? So I'm a pretty damn good flipper. You know, I'm, I'm not bad. I, I, I practice a lot to be competitive. But any time I have the option of emceeing, I will take that over competing every day of the week. That's a passion. That's a love. I get such fulfillment out of doing that. Um, I did recently flip in the makers competition that was hosted on Instagram. Yeah. I had to go up against Lucas really early, which Lucas is not only the best flipping maker in the world. He's just a really insane flipper. So it was kind of like I got a shot in the foot, but I did my best. And yeah, he, he clapped my cheeks like they were a couple bongo, bongo drums, but it was, <laughs> it was, it was, it was, yeah, that was probably my last like competition. Uh, but I still like to make edits. You know, I, I have a passion for flipping the music and putting a vibe to it. Totally. Um, so I, I still, I, I try to stay very competitive. Most people are often surprised when they see me flip in person. They're like, well, I didn't even, because I, I don't really put it out there as much as I used to. Um, but yeah, to answer your question, I, I would love to just keep doing the MC thing. Anytime I can be a part of the, the organization of these tournaments, that's, I want to be there because uh, it's not a flex. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a like entitlement thing. It's not a like brag thing, but I truly think I'm, I'm the best person for that job in the community. You are. And it speaks, it speaks to me directly. And so I'd love to keep doing that. Lucas told me an, a cool story. Recently. Shout out Ryan. Thank you. That's kind of you. Valley Smurf, very kind comment. 
Um, Lucas told me a cool story where you guys went out to eat. I think it was at a Blade show, and you gave the waitress like a whole demonstration about flipping or something like that. <laughs> he said it was so damn good. Yeah, we we sitting there uh, eating some food after Blade, and uh, waitress come up just kind of asking what the, what's going on. You know, what's the vibe with the Bowie songs? <laughs> And uh, he hands me a carbon fiber Nautilus and says, God, give him a demonstration. So I stand up, backstrike, and I say, here's the carbon fiber Nautilus from Squid Industries, made specifically machined to be flipped. And I started, like, doing flipping and, like, giving my, like, spiel like I'm a salesman and everyone was laughing. It was a good time. I, I love, you know, just being, being with those guys brings out the best of me. That's awesome, man. I love that. All right, you mentioned that worst, that first cut you got with the demon. So my next is worst cut. Is that the worst cut you've gotten, would you say? No. Do you want to tell um, about the worst cut? Yeah, so thank you, Jory. Yeah, I actually went to a barber shop and got my shit cleaned up for the first time since COVID. <laughs> so I'm looking clean for once. Um, so that demon one was definitely, I think I got like three that are tied. That demon one was bad because it went to the bone. Uh, literally, you could hear that heavy cleaver blade just, like, hit bone and stop. Um, and Ashpros, even back then, he's always been – because he, he's always done knives. He just went to Bally's later in, in his career. He's always been able to make the sharpest edge you could ever – his edges are ridiculous. Yeah. So that thing wrecked me. Other than that, um, my personal prototype Gigas, um, it has the same edge it's always had. I've never resharpened it, and it still cuts pretty damn good. Um, but when I first put an edge on that, I was testing out my Wicked Edge, and I said, oh, I'm going to test out all the different, you know, 600 grit, finish it at that, all the way to mirror. So I, I put a mirror edge on my prototype Gigas. Right when I finished that fresh mirror edge, I dropped it, and uh, you probably can't see it very well, but, like, my, my pinky is permanently messed up right here because I dropped the Gigas in the belly, the belly just sliced and ate it like a snack. Oh, and so I could literally open up my pinky and see like strands of, it was bad. So what's up, Jimpy? That, that one, Jimpy, shout out Jimpy, who was just talking about you, man. I flipped my thumb chucks. Um, and then the third one, the other worst one is, you know, DCB, DC Blade Works. I have two of them. That, yeah. I've that man can, can, bad cuts. that man can put an edge on a knife and, uh, I once had a, if you're familiar with GP knives, he makes mm -hmm. custom, big, crazy valley songs. I had a custom GP cleaver sharpened by DCB, and it took probably a quarter inch of the top of my finger off. I was lucky, like, most of it grew, like, the, the nail and stuff grew back, but, like, I lost some length on my, on my finger. Legit. Mid-air, I was doing, like, a, a helix aerial. Mid-air, just whoosh, so all three of those were my worst cuts that made me second guess flipping. <laughs> Ouch. But, yeah. And somehow we still keep going. <laughs> bro, yeah, like at this point, at this point I'm good enough that bad cuts don't really happen. Uh, Ooh, and the cuts, your syrup of blade show, awesome. The cuts that do happen are manageable, you know? Yeah. Um, can you give us some insight on your manipulation process? Do you have anything that you go through when you get into a zone or do you just go out and flip? Do you have like a, a favorite area of your house where you flipped? I notice you do a lot like near your garage and then out on your yep. front lawn, right? Yep. So definitely like lawn, outdoor, that's kind of my vibe. Near the garage is usually where I'm at when it's like later in the day because I have good lighting there. Um, but other than that, I'm just flipping wherever I'm at. Um, but as far as like process goes, I, I, uh, last thing to touch on that. I do like traveling into nature, streams, rivers, hiking, and taking knives to flip because flipping in nature is a different experience altogether. Sure. Um, but, uh, the, as far as like the manipulation process goes, I'm a freestyle flipper. I have no routine. Uh, anytime I have competed, uh, it's never been a routine. Um, I can't, I can't get routines in my head and keep them and remember them. So it's just, uh, it's a flow state thing for me. Uh, flipping is therapy. 
we can talk more about this and you know whatever but like I, i've suffered from depression and anxiety very heavily for most of my life since i was 16 take four pills a day uh, medical marijuana everything you can think of to to, to help that uh keep staying stay in check and flipping actually is one of those things that's therapy for me so it's definitely like a flow state brain shuts off flow turns on and i kind of just flip absolutely so. same for me man for sure like flipping has helped me gain some i don't know it just calms me make gives me this place to kind of escape to for a bit and yeah. uh, that moment where you just need some time on your own away from things you know absolutely yeah so flipping definitely gives that gives that opportunity yeah steampunk Dak asked your favorite part of the knife making process that's a good question that's a great question and while it's not necessarily part of the knife being made my favorite part is when somebody tells me how much they enjoy it or that it's their favorite flipper or i see them flipping it or you know what i mean like like those moments where like reality kind of clicks in and you're like these people that I've, you know, I've been dumping all my passion and stuff into these knives and selling them to these people. And then when you see them enjoying them so thoroughly, it literally like, it's like a level up, man. Like if you're an RPG character, you just gained some experience points and leveled up, man. Like it's that feeling of whoosh, like, yeah, I love it. So for me, the best part of the make, the, the process for knives and any creation process is the fulfillment you get when others enjoy it, even in a, a small portion of how you enjoyed creating it. Um, what, what do you think is next as far as trick evolution? I mean, people are like doing crazy stuff, but do you see some stuff happening? Um, do you see it evolving to somewhere beyond? I mean, where, when does it stop? Is there going to be an end point? Do you think there, it's just going to, you know, people are going to start doing it off their elbows or, you know, I don't know yeah, what, no. what's going to happen. I think I think anywhere on the body is game. Um, you know, in in other flow arts and things, there's often hacks. You know, using your feet um, for kicks, uh, knees, elbows. I think any part of the body is game. Ass bumps, dude. It's you know what? Like people are gonna <laughs> figure it out. For me, the evolution is going to be um, the continuation of doubles. Um, I know there's a lot of good double flippers out there, but just off the top of my head, James Hill is the one who's like leading, yeah. leading the the progress of double flipping, and I think that that's going to be the natural progression. Like once, once one hand flipping hits a point where it's like maybe the evolution doesn't have somewhere else to go, adding that other hand in there is going to be big. Um, but I don't actually think that point will ever come when you run out of like ways to evolve because it's cyclical. Um, I've already witnessed within the Bally Sound community the cyclical, the cyclicity. How it's a, it often, it's, I'll make up words, cyclicity of it. Um, and uh, there's already been new tricks coming out that are tricks that I saw when I started with four years ago that people were doing that are just untalked about anymore. Like anything you have done on a bally with your ass, with your elbows, whatever, it's already been done. Just maybe not in the current vibe of the evolution of flipping. So it's going to be a cycle. It's going to be, it's going to be power aerial heavy. It's going to be flow heavy. It's going to be technical heavy. It's going to go back to being flow heavy. And, and it's going to be a cycle of what tricks are in um, as far as evolution goes, but I think with that point being made, if people kind of just keep sticking to their styles and evolving their own personal style, that's how evolution happens. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, what do you think of other sorts? I mean, we mentioned it a little bit with the yo-yos and stuff like that. Uh, other fidget hobbies. Do you have any other ones that you do besides yo-yo? What else was there? The I, the thumb chucks you have yeah beg larry beg larry yo yo um definitely the thumb chucks are kind of a new kind of i mean i see the thumb chucks kind of fall in that big larry realm for me um 
but yeah, other than that, nothing else really flow art I just related. Ordered one of those uh, knuckle. Uh, uh, what are those? The knuck K bones, knuckle bones. Yeah. Yes, I just ordered. Yeah, one of those. I, They're kind of, those are cool. cool. I can't do those. I can't do coins. I can't do zippos. Um, one thing I'm absolutely insane at to this day, I was born insane at is rhythm games. So if you think things like Dance Dance Revolution, I guess is the most popular one maybe Americans would know about, but a lot of the a lot of the rhythm games that I I've played are from Japan. Uh, but there's definitely a similar connection and flow state between rhythm gaming and flipping or flow arts. So I would definitely include rhythm gaming in that section. Yeah, or like those. Uh, um, what's it called? Uh, uh contact juggling or whatever yeah yeah i would i whole, actually think contact amazing. juggling yeah yeah i think contact juggling is amazing it looks amazing uh with like the glass balls that's something i'd like to get good at but um i have some like i've had some neuro neurological issues since i was a kid um this is about as you don't see the shaking so much on the camera but that's about as still as i can get my hands so when it comes to things like contact juggling where stillness is a factor I just am like set up for failure. <laughs> um, uh, any other hobbies that you have? You mentioned uh, that you go and play card games, right? You, yeah, so so I, I, I've always played card games. I used to travel for the Pro Tour for Magic the Gathering. Um, and uh, I played Pokemon for a while. Now I mostly just collect Pokemon, but... Right now, I actually run tournaments for a local shop for competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! and play competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, as well. So um, those are like the card games I'm into right now. Do you spend um, time video... with Bali Song, would you say? Uh, it's hard to gauge because the Bali Song is always on me. Like when I'm doing those things, like the Bali Song is on me. And like if I am able to flip, it probably is in my hand being flipped. So... And you show up to Bally the song card just like a, they're like, oh, shit, that's so cool. <laughs> anyone anyone who's around me in any vicinity just knows already. Like, I just, I got a bally in my hand. So, um, but yeah, gaming as a whole, uh, if anyone knows old school RuneScape, I'm a big RuneScape player, which is something, you know, uh, that's, a, that's fun. Um, I have guitars and basses. I play guitar and bass. Nice. Um... And I'm trying to think if you there's ever anything. Any like... or anything? No, no. I, I'm. I would. I would consider myself a soloist. Um, I often like playing solo pieces, like uh, a lot of the stuff. Uh, all actually of the stuff that I know how to play on bass is just solo pieces for bass. Okay. Um, so like, yeah, it's a. Uh, yeah, it's it's anything musical. Uh, I like to freestyle rap. Uh, there was once upon a time I was trying to be like a SoundCloud rapper in my early 20s. Uh, so uh, listening to hip hop, rap music is, is a hobby, um, deciphering lyrics. And so, yeah, uh, I like to do anything kind of hip hop music related. Um, that's probably the, the spread of my hobbies. That's pretty dang good, man. That's more than I knew about. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. like you know, when you broke out the yo-yo, I was like, oh, okay, there you go. Um, yep. So Steampunk's asking any tips for aspiring makers, machinists, like going through the process, how to find machinists, producing, producer, if you're more of a designer. So I'll be 100% honest with you. If you want any sort of tips as far as design process goes, the actual physicality of making, finishing, uh, doing the work with your hands, all that, I got you. Hit my DMs. I'll answer any questions you got. A lot of people have asked me tips on finding a machine shop, finding a manufacturer. I got lucky. It was like I hit the lottery. I had an absolute nightmare trying to find a machine shop. I wanted to keep it within the U.S. I wanted it to be with a, a, a doable price. It was not happening. Uh, and, and I'm not trying to like shut down anyone's dreams here. Um, but just telling you like the reality of my situation, I can, I cannot offer any insight there because it literally was the stars aligning for me. I, I had zero luck finding anywhere that I could get it manufactured, ready to give up. And, uh, the benevolence of Lucas, uh, introducing me to Julian saved my whole process. So I, 
I wish I had more input as far as getting that done. I think it's um, so cool that Julian does that and, you know, all the knives that he's been helping with to yeah. step beyond just what he's doing and and take time. But, I mean, I also, I mentioned this in another live, and I don't know if it's something you heard me say before, but, you know, it makes sense for a lot of people who own a machine shop. They're just making... Uh, auto part for somebody or some other thing, you know, yeah. they, they don't care what the project is coming in. And I'm not saying Julian's like that. I'm saying that's a normal process for them. They have these machines. So they're taking an order for somebody and they know about it, you know, and especially and I don't, I don't know Julian's situation with his machines, obviously, but especially if you, I, I know a, a realistic option for a lot of people is leasing these machines. So if you're leasing your machine, you're paying monthly exactly. for it. Yeah. And if it's not running, you're losing money. So absolutely, if you have a machine, that shit should be running 24-7. If you but, make you as much money as you can. Yeah. Yeah. Dalen was like, you know, his machines run, you know, at machine wise, 23 hours a day. <laughs> yep. That, and that's efficiency. Yeah. yeah. I mean, man give the machine you know an hour for the machine to breathe and cool down and then right back to work you know poor machine yep. um so we saw your cat there you got any other pet pets yeah so that was tuesday my cat the wbc mascot um i have two dogs a short hair miniature dachshund or sorry a long hair miniature dachshund named jace uh named after jace the mind sculptor from magic the gathering and then we have a mix. We don't know 100% what he is. He's a rescue. Looks like a golden. Maybe he has a little bit of chow or something in him. He's very poofy. But his name's Jax. And he's just a, a sweetheart. Before we got him, he sustained a permanent injury to his back, which makes life kind of hard for him. But we've made life really good for him. And he's just a love bug. And then uh, we got one other cat, Sam. So two cats, two dogs. And is your wife, um, does she, did you meet her? Does she play Magic the Gathering or something? Is that why you named your animals this way? Or is no, she, she just, she just let me kind of have the free reign there uh, on Jace's name. Um, but so before I quit my career job to start WB Concept, um, I worked for about a decade at a company. Uh, it's an online college uh, that runs out of it's an international online college um but runs out of salt lake city here and um she is the uh di she's a director in the nursing college um she actually has her phd in nursing she's a very accomplished nurse um and now is focused on education and so i met her at that gig where i was doing it work for 10 years okay so met, met her through that job Okay, and what is, that's one of my questions on this list here, we're getting towards the end, um, yeah. was, you know, what does your family think, you know, without getting too personal about your family or your wife, I, you know, I don't normally sure. go that direction, but seemed comfortable enough to bring that up. Um, but, uh, um, you know, what does your family think that you flip and that, you know, you, and then that was part of my other question, you had a, a career job before and now you're, now you're doing knife stuff full time? Yeah, so um, at first, uh, Sherry, my wife, she she kind of was just like, what, what is this hobby? Like, <laughs> are you cutting yourself? You're making click clacky noises all day. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, like, what is the enjoyment here? Um, just so you know, I don't forget you, Ryan, I will get back to you and answer your question after these two. Um, but as time has gone on and she, especially once I started making my own stuff, that passion, I mean, obviously she's the closest one to me. So she sees the passion and fulfillment. It brings me in happiness. It brings me, and she's been nothing but supportive in every single manner. Uh, so she's awesome. She's even started talking about learning to flip. Um, so yeah, that's great. Aiden, my kid, uh, he loves his squiddies. You know, he, he flips them around. He thinks it's so cool, you know, the dad, you know, flipping knives around or whatever. So, uh, yeah, family, family's been nothing but supportive. Um, my family's really a big reason. The only part I'm able to like even make knives, 
Uh, my grandpa, rest rest in peace, before he passed away last year, he gave me a, a, a nice little loan for uh, pro- part of the project that I was short on, and and without that, WBC wouldn't even be here. So, uh, yeah, like it's definitely family roots uh, in here for sure. My dad um, recently convinced me to auction off his prized number one uh, Bally for, for support of WB Concept. And so, yeah, it's – Get support from the family all the way around. That's awesome. And then I, for, I forgot what the second part to that question was. Oh, uh, what your family thought. Oh, your job that you had before and then yeah. how you're making so, a living. You kind of touched on it. You, you, yeah. It's basically, like, I was doing IT. If anyone's familiar with Salesforce, I was a Salesforce administrator um, working on development uh, for an online college. And I did that um, in the IT realm. And uh, honestly, you know, with, with my depression and anxiety and just the problems I have uh, that I'm fully aware of, I don't do well. Uh, I've realized in my life in like a corporate environment, being tasked by people above me and yeah. kind of having, having them kind of run my day or, you know, it, it was a huge mental shift that I didn't realize was going to happen when I started doing my own thing. Um, but yeah, I, I started selling gigas while i still had that job and the money uh just worked out enough you know it wasn't insane I, i'm not making like hand over fist or anything but it, it was enough for me to realize if i put the effort into that that i'm putting in to the, to my day job like it was a kind of a no-brainer at that point talked to the wife and made it happen so quit that job <clears throat> said deuces to the man and uh i never looked back Nice. Yeah, I, be- I truly believe that anything you put enough effort and time into, you can get good at it, or you can succeed in it. You can make a living doing that if you really want to. And, and staying in something that you really don't like is, is just so unhealthy, you know. It's- and I didn't, I didn't realize like the levels of toxicity and self issues that came up from not getting out of that situation. And so once I was out of that situation, it kind of was like, I should have done this. I should have put forth the effort to do anything else a long time ago. But, um, you know, it was a great job, good pay. The, the people were good. Just definitely the, the usual corporate politics and management issues and all that. All right. Well, let's take some questions here. Let's see. Are you on to get back to one that was there before? Yeah. Anybody else who um, wants to send a question? this way yeah, a little bit of time here to uh, answer some questions questions from the chat um ryan asks will the future projects be named after the cats and dogs ak a la pudding um while i love my cats and my dogs and i'm not like against that idea no but only because i already have an idea in mind and this is something i've never talked about so here you go this is some wb lore I've got lore, dog. Um, if you look at my profile, it says current project WBC Beastman Series Gigas. In Final Fantasy, uh, where I got the name Gigas from, there are basically races of monster humanoids. The Gigas are the giants. They're called Beastmen, and each of the Beastmen have a different name, and my intention is to go through each of those beastmen names and design and have a knife uh, based on that and have a beastman series. So the Gigas is the first in the line. The Yagudo is another one from the same thing. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's, that's like some future WB lore that's coming up that All right. I haven't really touched on. Yeah. Somebody asked another, are you seeing the questions there? Yeah. Yeah, we got, would you want to grow your company as big as Squid? Absolutely. Um, And I think that's just from having been um, so close with them and their processes and their growth. Um, Seeing Squid go from a few person operation to a 40 person operation plus operation multiple machines it's kind of shown it's it's honestly led a kind of a pathway for me to to follow a pathway of success that I can emulate and uh i I would absolutely love to have a shop where 
I can just sit and do what my, my passion is the design, you know, everything else, you know, tuning, everything else. I like all that. I like every part of the knife making process, but my passion is the design. So if, if I can get to a, an end goal where I can just sit there and make the coolest designs in the world and then have my shop manufacture and put them out there, that's the goal. Nice. Very cool. Let's see. Any other questions on there? I'm not sure what. Any, any other questions for you, boy, before we wrap it up, y'all? Yeah, we've done good here. We've been on for an hour and 42 minutes. This is a long one. Sometimes they flow like really naturally like this. Uh, like it's, that. It's the, Most of them do it, once I get we get going and stuff like that. Some are just quicker than others, but I feel we've really dug in deep here to some things. We got we did we did good. Oh uh, yes, yeah, you're you're easy to talk to. You ask good questions. So cool. I appreciate that. I do my best to pay respect and be like you know jokey, but also be serious about it because these these are things I'm interested in. I think everybody else is too. So. Um, Absolutely. Any tips for aspiring makers or tips for finding? Oh, didn't wait. You answered that. Yeah, I like, I think we got that one. Uh, Tyler asking, "How's it going?" Um, it's going great, brother. We got Deermir shoutouts. Uh, that's one of my best friends in real life. Also, I think I saw Sam Funston join another one of my best friends in real life. I mentioned that Musketeers group I have. Uh -huh. That's two of them. That's right. two of them right there. They found us. He cool. says, may have missed a lot. You missed an hour and 40 minutes. And he says, Gigas channel design when? That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, well, you know, your damn friends should like, follow my page because I'm 10 people away from my giveaway. So I really want to <laughs> give away this shirt and knife. So like just go follow Paul or just go follow me so I can give this damn crap away. Anyway, go follow Paul. If you don't, don't want to follow me, don't follow me. I don't care. Follow, follow W W B content. So how was, how did you get the name? What was up with that? So, um, man, I, I didn't expect you to ask that question. Um, all right, I guess we'll just, I just, well, I, it's, it's kind of a thing, but we'll, we'll just go in all honest, honesty. Yeah, you don't um, have to answer, you can pass. No, no, it's, it's, it is what it is. Um, when I first was in the Facebook group in the Ballyson community, just as a flipper, there was a, there was a guy who joined and like, he typed really weird, like he typed really gangster, like, yo, my friends call me Icebox, what it do, Bally Flippers, just getting into the community. And so like, I wasn't really trying to make fun of it. I, it just really made me laugh. So like, I replied to his, his thing and I was like, yo, what up Icebox, my name's White Bread, welcome to the Bally Song community. And so like, that stuck and for like the next year, people just started calling me White Bread. And, uh, or, you know, WB. And so that was four years ago. The actual only OGs know about the white bread days. Um, so without it really ever meaning anything, I just did WB concept and design because my, like I said, I like my focus to kind of be on the design uh, part of things. But it's well and, uh, blade, right? Yes. Yeah, so, so when I officially, you know, decided to make it a business, um, I figured, uh, uh, using something that maybe spoke to the business and made a little more sense um, and worked with the logo too uh, w would work. Uh, Western Valley song concept and design, you know, I'm in the Midwest here in Utah, uh, everything manufactured out here in the Midwest. Um, and the, the logo for WBC is uh, inspired by Utah um, uh, because we have like the Utah mountainous skyline here the sun and the clouds so not only do we have the mountain the mountains which is utah's famous for the sun and the clouds but that's actually a w a b and a c also kind of has a little bit of an anarchy so symbol to it now that I yeah got it. yeah <laughs> yep so just really fell in love with the design and you know the whole western concept fits fit with that so speaks to my roots. So it just kind of made more sense as a business name. Thank you, Bally's Murph. Uh, he thinks, somehow he thinks that we're two cool dudes. 
<laughs> Dang, man. Just want to uh, give my love to Paul and Guy for the great interview. What a pair of cool dudes. Thank you, Ryan. You're a cool dude. What the fly doing? What the fly doing? What the fly doing? <laughs> Guy is such a wizard, man. You know me. I'm out here casting spells, dog. Right on, man. I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. It's been awesome. And we finally got her done. And um, I love every second of it. Awesome. And thank you guys all for watching these uh, lives that I'm doing. Um, I look forward to seeing you in Salt Lake City. Uh, hopefully we'll get to Absolutely. sit down and hang out together. But we'll probably both be really busy running around. But I'm sure, I'm sure we'll find some chill we'll time, time as well. We'll have time. Well, there's always time for friends. Awesome. Thank you guys very much. Thank you, Guy. This is Damn Right I Got Knives signing out. Adios. Damn right you got knives. <laughs> Peace yeah. out, everybody. Love to the community. Right on. Thank you, guys. Have a good night.